So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Inkscape to create text, curved text on a curved ribbon like this. But in order to do this, you're going to have to download the font that I've included in the description. So just go to the link in the description and download that font. It's a free download. Um, open it and install it. And once you have it installed, go ahead and open up Inkscape and we'll get started. So let's go ahead and open up a new document here. This should be your view. We're going to go to view. Have custom selected view then we're gonna to go to view zoom zoom one to one then we're gonna to go to file document properties let's uncheck these two boxes and close that out and then we're gonna open up our align to align and distribute menu by clicking on that button right there and then we will open up our edit objects colors gradients and stroke menu by clicking that button right there and down here in the align and distribute menu make sure you have last selected chosen from that list so once you have that set up we're ready to get started so the first thing we'll do is come over here to the create circles and ellipses and we're going to click on that and let's set the color to red I might have to draw it first so let's go and draw let's go and draw an ellipse like this just click and drag to draw an ellipse something about that size and that shape turn it red and then come over to the opacity slider and let's, let's slide that down in half. So make sure you have it about half so we can see through different layers while we're working. Then we're going to come back up to the arrow. And then we're going to right click on this uh, ellipse and we're going to go to duplicate. And we're going to turn that blue. And then ho while holding your control key, click and drag this down to about, to about there. And then hold shift and click on the red ellipse and let's go to path difference all right now let's right click that and go to duplicate and now we're going to draw a box over this shape we're going to draw a box about about that big all right after you've done that come over to the arrow key click on that and then hold shift and click on our little crescent here and come down to the align and distribute menu and let's center that on the vertical axis by clicking that button and we're going to select, we're going to go to Path, Intersection. Now let's go ahead and draw another box. It's going to be a, just a little bit smaller than the last one. About that size. And then come back up to the arrow and hold Shift and click on this bottom crescent right here. And let's center that up on the vertical axis. And let's go to Path, Intersection. And let's raise this to the top by clicking this button right here. We're going to click that once. And then holding, holding your control key, click and drag this up slightly, up to about there. All right, now we're going to draw one more rectangle. Let's, let's go ahead and click and drag and draw another rectangle over this. Just a, a little bit smaller than the second one. Let's go back to the arrow. Hold Shift and click on this bottom piece right here. We're going to center that on the vertical axis and we're going to go to path difference. Now after that let's click on this top part of the ribbon that we're creating and let's click on this button right here to raise that to the top. And then let's go to our magnifying glass. Let's click on that and let's click and drag over this bottom corner right here so we can zoom in and see what we're doing. Next we're going to go to our bezier pen. Click on that and then come up here to where it says snap to cusp nodes. Let's click that button and turn that on. Now bring your cursor over the corner of this bottom piece right here. And once it, once your cursor snaps onto it, click on that once and then hold your control key and bring the line all the way up to about here. And then click again and then let go of your control key and bring the cursor over to this corner. And once it snaps onto that corner, click there and then bring it this line over to the starting point and click there. Now let's go to our arrow key, let's click on that, let's turn that blue, and we'll come up here to the stroke paint tab, we're going to click on that, and then we're going to click the X button to turn the stroke off. And then come over here to the opacity slider, let's bring that down in half to about there. And then let's click on this top red banner right here, let's right click on this, go to duplicate, and then hold shift and click on this blue shape we just created, and then go to path difference so you end up with something like that now let's right click on this let's go to duplicate 
and let's flip this flip this horizontally by clicking that button once and let's click and drag this over here to this side and let's snap it onto those corners over there and once you've done that you can turn the snap to cusp nodes button off so you can go and turn that off and you can zoom back you can zoom back out by pressing the one key on your keyboard and then we'll be right about here so the next thing we'll do is we're going to click on this top red ribbon right here and then we're going to right click it and go to duplicate we're going to turn that green and then we're going to right click it and duplicate it again and turn that blue and then while holding your control key click and drag this down to about down to about there almost at the bottom but not quite maybe right about there and then hold shift and click on the, t the green piece so you have them both selected and go to path difference and then hold your shift key and click on this red piece of the banner right there and let's come down here and let's center that up on the horizontal axis so it looks like that now after you've done with that let's click and drag over this whole thing and then right click it go to duplicate and then go to path union and we're going to drop this all the way down to the bottom by pressing the button that says lower selection to the bottom we're going to click that and come up here to the stroke paint tab and let's click the blue button to turn that on and after you've turned that on we'll come over to the stroke style and we're going to give that uh, a 15 point stroke so just type in one five and hit enter and see how that looks okay I think that looks good you want it to be relatively thick so you could you know it, it'll be visible at small sizes so once you've done that let's go to path stroke to path and then go to path break apart path union now let's click on this red part these two red side pieces right here and then hold shift and click on the black uh, border we just created and let's go to path difference and then come and click on this red this red part of the ribbon right here that we just created then hold shift and click on the black border so you have them both selected and let's go to path difference and then let's click on this uh, blue corner piece right here and hold shift and click on the other one and then while still holding shift let's click on the black border so we can unify them we'll go to path union and that's going to make that all one shape just like that now let's go back to our magnifying glass and let's zoom in on this this side right here let's go to the bezier pen and then let's go let's turn this uh, snap to cusp nodes we'll turn that back on and bring the cursor over to this corner right here and once it snaps onto it click once and just bring the line up to here and once it snaps onto that corner click again and then bring it up to this corner and once it snaps click again and then bring it back down to the starting point and click so it should make a shape like that now let's go back to the arrow let's right click this and go to duplicate and let's flip this horizontally and click and drag it over to this side so we can snap it onto the corners over here just like we did over there all right now let's press the one key on the keyboard to zoom back out let's hold shift and click on the first shape and then click on the uh, the border of the ribbon while holding shift you want all three of those selected the two shapes we just drew as well as the black uh, the black border then we'll go to path union and you should end up with something like that okay now let's go up here to where it says snap to custom nodes let's turn that off and let's write some text go over to our text tool we'll click on that and then just click anywhere on the canvas and write text I'm just gonna write text for the, t for the sake of the tutorial you can put in whatever you want and then after that come up to the uh, the, the uh, text editor up here and let's find that font we just created that we just uh, installed Beavis hit apply X out of that and there you'll see it now let's go back to the arrow let's bring this text on top of the green this green part of the ribbon right here and let's hold control and shift and just click and drag on one of these corner arrows to enlarge it. you want to make it about about the same size just eyeball it for now it doesn't need to be exact at all once you get it to about this size click and drag it out of the way let's turn it blue 
Uh, and let's bring the opacity in half. And actually, let's hold Shift and then click on the green ribbon and let's center it up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. Let's deselect everything by clicking on this button. And let's go to our magnifying glass and let's zoom in over this selection right here so we can see what we're doing. Now let's go back to the arrow. Click on the text, hold control and bring it up to about the center. Bring it up to about the center of that green ribbon. It doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere in that, somewhere about there. And then we're going to go over to our um, create rectangles tool. We're going to click on that and we're going to create a rectangle going over the letter T. Just like that. Once you've done that, come over to the stroke paint tab. Let's turn that off by clicking the X button and let's make this red. And then you're going to want to come back up to the arrow over here and you're just going to want to uh, visually, you know, just, just eyeballing it, make this box about the same width as the letter T right here. And you want to make sure that this box is longer than the entire ribbon right here, like I have it on my screen. So once you have it about the same width as the letter T, let's right click it and go to duplicate. And let's hold control and click and drag this over to the left edge of the letter E. And again, let's make this about the same width as the letter E. Do the same thing again, right click, duplicate. Hold control and click and drag this over to the left edge of the X. And let's make this box the same width as the letter X. And then let's right click that, duplicate it, hold control, click and drag it over to the left edge of the T. And let's make that the same width as the letter T. And then after that, we're going to have to click on this. We're going to click on the text in the background but you're not going to be able to click it. You can, you can get around this by holding your Alt key and clicking it again. And then it'll select that layer. And then you uh, just raise the selection to the top like this. And let's just click and drag this out of the way for now. And let's press the 1 key on the keyboard to zoom back out. Now let's click on each and every one of these boxes right here. Hold Shift and click each one so we have them all selected. Come down here to the Align and Distribute menu. And we're going to come over here to where it says make horizontal gaps between objects equal. We're going to click that once to even them out. And we're going to go to path, union, and then hold shift and click on the green ribbon. And let's center that up on the vertical axis. And then afterwards, we're going to go to path, intersection. And we should end up with something like that. Now let's go back to our magnifying glass. Let's zoom in over this. Let's click and drag over this. Now let's come to our Bezier pen and come up here and let's turn this uh, snap to cusp nodes back on. And for what we're going to do next, it's important that we start at the top left corner and work in clockwise fashion in order for what we're going to do uh, to work. So let's go to the top left corner of each box. Click, 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 and then finish it up around the end right where you started. So we're going to go and do that for each one of these four uh, green shapes. Like I said, starting at the top left corner and going clockwise. Otherwise, the extension we're going to use to make the text take, take the shape of these, um, these objects we're creating isn't going to work. So it's important we do this in clockwise. Uh, we do this in a clockwise way. So go ahead and draw these uh, boxes over each one. And once you're done, let's go ahead and turn this off. The snap to custom nodes, we'll click and we'll turn that off. And let's go to the arrow and click on just the green shapes in the background. You'll know you have them selected because you could look down in the left bottom left corner and you'll see uh, the green stripe there. So you'll know you have them selected. And just press the delete key on your keyboard. We don't need them anymore. So once you've deleted them, press the one key on your keyboard to zoom out. And let's click on the text. Let's go to path object to path and then we're going to ungroup them and we're going to deselect everything by clicking that button right there now let's click on just the letter t let's hold shift and click on this first box and then go to extension modify path and envelope and this may take a little while depending on how fast or slow your computer is for me it usually doesn't take that long but I'm currently recording this while trying to create this. So uh, the program I'm using to record this is taking up even more memory. So this may take a little longer for me than it will for you. But either way, just 
just sit tight, be patient, and it'll eventually get there. Okay, so once that's done, let's click on the letter E. We're going to do the same thing. Hold Shift, and then click on this second shape right here, and let's go to Extension, Modify Path, Envelope. And we'll sit and wait for this one to render again as well. It's important that you click the letter first before you click on the shape, because if you click the shape first and then the letter, it won't work. It'll be completely backwards. So uh, there's a certain there's a certain order that has to be followed here. If you just if you do everything exactly as I'm describing it, it should work out fine. Okay, let's click on the X and then hold shift and click on this third shape. Let's go to extension, modify path, envelope. This normally doesn't take a quarter of the time it's taking now. It's because uh, this recording software I'm using, it's using up some memory on my computer. So uh, th this will probably render a lot quicker for you than it does for me. All right, one more to go. Let's click on the T, let's hold Shift, and let's click on that shape, and let's go to Extension, Modify Path, and Envelope. And we'll just have to sit and wait one more time. All right, we made it. So once that's all done, let's go to the magnifying glass. Let's click and drag over this selection right here to zoom in. Let's click on our arrow and let's go and delete each one of these um, these little boxes we created. Let's click on it and just press delete. Click on it, press delete, and click on it. Make sure you're not clicking the actual letters. You'll know you have the letters clicked on if you see the blue stripe in the bottom left. If you click on just the box, you'll see uh, a black stripe on the bottom. So that's how you'll know you've clicked the right one. So let's click it, and let's go to delete, and let's press the one key on the keyboard. Let's click and drag over the whole thing, and let's bring the opacity all the way to the right, and let's turn it black or whatever color you want. You could now make this look like whatever you want it to look like, and we're done. That's how you can create uh, a curved ribbon with curved text going over it on Inkscape. So if you have any questions, just let me know and thank you for watching. I really appreciate it.